Hello and welcome to another edition of Ecosphere. I am Mary Kanu. Pollution is a major problem across cities in the world. You know, some of the world's biggest uh, cities deal with pollution and it's in fact on the environment and health of residents. Now, Lagos State, the largest city in West Africa and the 21st largest city in the world is no exception and the resulting effect is the suffocating mix of air pollution, single-use plastic pollution and solid waste in the city's streets causing respiratory problems, floodings and other illnesses among the locals. Now, it is estimated that at least 35 people die every year in Lagos due to pollution. Now, on this edition of the program, we'll be taking a look at uh, ways to solve the problem of pollution and improper disposal of waste in Lagos State. Waste littered streets, open defecation, air pollution, and the likes are what residents of the Commercial Nef Center of Nigeria are faced with on a daily basis in Lagos. Environmental pollution is the order of the day. Residents deal with different forms of pollution in the city streets, leaving many with respiratory illnesses. Having lived for many years in this area, the Itiresu Liriluku government area of Lagos State, some of the residents say they strongly believe the state government does not care about their living conditions. This area now has been dirty for so years. When I was in small self, I was seeing all this kind of thing, talkless of now that have already been gotten hold and still yet the area is still like this. You understand? And I want government to come and do here so that it will be okay. So that water will not be flowed everywhere. And why? Even last month self, a kid fell inside this water. This canal self last month when there was rainy season then and we do have power to bring it out. In 2021, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu said his administration has spent over 2 billion naira on the rehabilitation of dump sites across the state, while another 1 billion naira is being invested to provide the necessary infrastructure for waste management. If these projects have been carried out, residents are yet to witness the results or see an improvement in waste management. You see all these diseases coming now. We're seeing recurrent cases of Lassa fever. Lagos is not spared. Of course, the rats go there, eat, pick jams, transfer to people, and then the same thing now we're having monkeypox. So in reality, if we deal with the challenges of waste alone, I am sure that our health system will be good. Our health itself will be good. Now, when you now get to the waterways, um, plastic floating, um, dead animals floating, dead human beings floating, uh, microplastic dropping into the water, fish swallowing them, we eating the fish. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a scandal. It's honestly a scandal. I, I think um, the more we, we put attention to the challenges of the environment and, the, and how waste is, is, is handled in this part of the world, the better for us. A mega city, 25 million people, still counting, and we cannot get waste right, waste disposal right. We're not ready. The drainage system in Lagos is very bad. We've seen cases where vehicles, humans, and other materials worth billions of naira have been lost or damaged due to drainage. This is one of the things that we are decrying Lagos. Unfortunately, when this drainage, when this flood water make contact with feces, that have been deposited as a result of open defecation. These feces make their way into water bodies, open water bodies like wells, where Lagosians get their uh, drinking water from. Lagosians end up consuming water that has been contaminated with human fecal matter, sometimes fecal matter from animal dungs and all other, other contaminants. They end up being consumed by humans, and of course these humans come down with several waterborne diseases. Unfortunately, we end up having cases of diarrhea, cases of cholera, hepatitis A and E, and many other food and waterborne diseases. I've practically seen cases where people also have their food stuff, their fruits and other things they sell, 
edible commodities fall into gutters, fall into flood water, and they still pick it up and sell it to Lagosians. These are some of the things that are causing the myriads of diseases that we see in Lagos year in, year out. Have you wondered why Lagos is the epicenter of disease infection across the length and breadth of uh, uh, Nigeria? It's because of the poor drainage and the poor disposal of waste. Unfortunately, these are the things that we are experiencing in Lagos. This must stop, and for this to stop, we must improve our sewage disposal, we must improve the disposal of waste materials, and we must limit air pollution as much as possible. Environmental pollution is not the only challenge residents face as a result of improper waste disposal. The arising issue of climate change, a resulting effect of human activities, has upset the balance of nature. You know, we have also generated waste, you know, from the consumption and every other thing. You know, we have the industrial waste, the ones that comes out from the big country and uh, industries. Um, then we also have the clinical waste, that the one from hospitals and from clinics, which are very, very sensitive. So the way we handle them, uh, it's, uh, there's a protocol in terms of the way we handle them, their disposal, where we dispose them, how we dispose them, who disposes them. You know, have, it, it has its own protocol. Then also we have, um, the other agricultural waste, the ones that come from animals and others, others. Now, this waste, how we manage them is very important because if we do not manage them well, they come back to affect us as humans and every, um, all uh, living things that actually live within the environment, both humans and plants, if um, the waste are not uh, well managed. So, obviously, when waste find their ways into places where they shouldn't, like the drainage, like the drains, the drainage lines, of course, they block the drainage, and whenever rain comes, of course, we are flooding. And, you know, in flooding, there are different types of flooding. So the one that waste usually creates is the flash flooding, okay? When the drains are blocked, when waters cannot flow well, so, of course, the water comes back on the streets, and they come back to meet us in our homes, and then we have a flooding, which affects um, um, people. Our recycling activities is still very poor, because there are a lot of opportunities that comes in if you have a good waste management system. But um, we are still moving. We are not moving, we are actually still crawling. You know, we have not actually started, okay? So a lot of this plastic waste, they are not well disposed. They are not disposed of properly and they find their way into the drains. Some even find their way into the waters that um, 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 life in waters is not even safe anymore. We have had situations where waste was ashore. And when they open up this waste, they see a lot of plastic waste in, in, in there, right? So at the same time, within the community, these plastic waste find themselves in all the drainage. I can tell you, in Lagos State today, anywhere you find yourself, just open up the drains. Just open up the drainage system if it's covered. If it's not covered, it's obvious there, you know. And you see a situation where when rain falls, um, the, a, a particular line of the drainage system, you see that uh, waters are not flowing along that line because it's blocked. Okay, people even have this habit of constructing this metal to block this waste from coming into their own um, 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 part of the road. And so this water has come onto the road and we have a flooding. So they are a major cost, especially the plastic waste. Well, we'll take a break here, but when we return, the program will continue. Do stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we've been talking about um, resolving the issues of improper disposal of waste in Lagos State. According to the World Health Organization, making the environment healthier can prevent about 13 million deaths yearly and avoid 13% to 37% of the world's disease burden. Lagos State generates 13,000 tons of waste daily but not all of the waste ends up at designated dump sites. Some end up in canals, drains and on the road. Okay, we collect this waste from the household. When you collect this waste, we put them together. Then the process, we try to separate the waste. Okay, ordinary, that's how it should be. You separate the waste. Okay, that, because there are some of the waste that are recyclable, all right? So you separate them. Um, while the other ones that will be going for total disposal will be the ones that will find themselves their way to the dump sites. Okay, so it's a process before it gets to the dump site. Now, the challenge where the government erred um, in three ways. 
One, dump sites are located away from the community. And when these dump sites are located, there, are, there should be existing legislations that restrict community development to that area. Okay? If a place is cited as a dump site, it's away from the city. And there's restriction in terms of urban development because there should be some form of um, 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 distance between the dump site and where, um, you know, uh, 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 um, habitable areas. Okay? Because from that dump site, one of the worst um, 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 chemicals that depletes the ozone layer, you know, comes out of the dump site, which is the methane. And it is very, very harmful and dangerous. So, dump sites are said to be sited away from the community. Now, in Lagos, we have a situation where dump sites are located or sited away from the community. But there is no um, restriction that halts urbanization to that located um, dump site. So, for example, there's a place called Yanoba. The place was located about 25 years ago. And it was far from city. But there was no restriction in terms of urbanization, urban development. Today, there are houses surrounding that dump site. So, elsewise, the people living around that place are not safe. That's one. The Olushosu dump site at Ojota, when it was located, houses were far from that place. You know, it's a place that, when we, in those days, because they maintain, when the heat, when the, when, when the heat from maintain starts coming out, you see smoke coming out, you think they are burning the way they are not. It's the maintain that is reacting, all right? So you see this is from distance. But today, houses have been built around that place, such that people who are living there, they are not safe. The water system is poisoned, it's not safe, all right? Then the, the, the maintain that comes out of that emits from that place, it's not safe for the humans living around there. So that's why I said the government have erred in that area in terms of restricting, in terms of putting in place um, um, enforcement so that people will not be towards that place. So the government have failed in that area. Two, in terms of management of the dump sites, usually in most countries, these things are kind of like privatized to companies who are genuinely um, involved in environmental activities. To experts who understand this thing, right? The government cannot do it alone. The government is expected to generate, to, to bring up um, um, and put up legislations. You know, they are supposed to be a kind of, uh, uh, um, they, they try to stabilize within the private sector and the public sector, right? But they are not expected to manage the dump sites. Professionals who understand the dangers and the kind of harmful chemicals that comes out of that dump site are supposed to manage the dump site. But here, an agency was created, Loma, to manage that dump site, okay? And those dump sites are not well managed. The third aspect where the government is I, I'm not uh, performing well in that area is the waste collection in itself. Now, we have in Lagos State, um, the collectors were registered, okay, fine. Um, there were a uh, list of items that they must uh, procure before they can be listed as one of the collectors, you know, like um, the trucks um, that uh, the, the, the crop of with the waste collection trucks and what have you. Now, a lot of them are using trucks that are dilapidated. Some of them have trucks that are not enough to cover the area that has been allotted to them. Okay, and you discover that the collection is poor. Some of these trucks can't even get to the residence of a lot of the people living in the communities. So people have to converge at the particular points. Now, when they dump the waste there, it takes a while before the collectors, uh, the, the trucks arrive there to pick up the waste. That's another issue, which is another environmental issue. So the collection in itself is poor. And you see some of these trucks collecting this waste. When they even collect the waste on the road, you see it's part of the um, waste dropping on the road. Okay? And uh, they, just, they, they litter everywhere. So driving to that dump site is another issue. And all these things, they have it. Um, um, they, they have their effect, you know, and it has to do with proper waste management system. In the second quarter of 2022, a global livability index report by the Economist Intelligence Unit ranked Lagos State 171 out of 172 countries and the least of most livable cities in the world 
mainly Nigeria's commercial hub, and former capital was ranked the world's second least livable urban area and worst city in Africa. But the state government says the continuous attitude of littering by residents results in the deterioration witnessed in the state. Negotiations are trying also. They come here, they come from their community and come and give us information here. And you go. When you get there, it's true. One big man would have taken up, we have built on the drains. And they were afraid to go and talk to him. Even if they talk to him, you don't, they will come and report and we go. We have tax force here that recover setbacks and chase some people away from wetlands. You know what wetland does? If you have heavy flooding like this, they settle there. That's where it's supposed to settle. Then when the rain stops, it will not start moving into the lagoon. You will see grass is there again. But that does not mean that you have to go and build there. It's low. There are areas we have in Lagos here are not supposed to, to build. You're not supposed to live there. Itarabadia is one of them. Shibri is one of them. There are places in, you know, uh, Ketu there that you're not supposed to live. Yes, you will see greens, but you won't know that underneath that it's, it's, it's water. So you're not supposed to live there. And so many of them, you know, agility, all of them, you're not supposed to live there. I can, can't trace it here now. We should call the names. We are not supposed to go and live. There are wetlands, no lying areas, below sea level. But because of scarcity and paucity of houses, people still go there to build. They won't build a story building and mansions, you know, but chanties. And when it comes, when the flood comes, they will start shouting. The yeah, government come over and die over. We get say you're not supposed to be here. Government duty is to provide a conducive atmosphere for business to try for people to live to, to make the city a livable city. That's our duty. Ah, if you have a bad road here, they will not call you to come. It's government they will call. We we'll gotta go there and check what caused this pothole here. Okay, let's check the drains. Drains is the first place to go. Is it okay? Okay. If it's not okay, get the FR people to come and clean it up and then get the, the works, you know, uh, Ministry of Works to come and uh, pass up the road. Finish. You know, but government cannot handle all the roads in Lagos at the same time and provide all the drains at the same time. Gradually, these things will be in place. Gradually, we don't know. So we are responsive and responsible. We care. Government is established to serve the people. You are serving the people, you are not serving yourself. That's what we we'll do. Well, that's how much we can take on this edition of the program. Many thanks for staying with us. I am Mary Kanu. Bye bye.